it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip for you. Okay, so you may be somebody that loves to write. Everybody's got a book in them, after all. <laughs> and I hope you have downloaded my free mini book, Once Upon a Time, from my website. It's a simple process. You tweet and you get it. Okay? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody's got a book in them, however you may be somebody who has aspired to be a published author for quite some time and you've written a few books already. Well, low startup, low overheads, high return, why don't you just go and put your book on Amazon Kindle and such places. So you're going to write a Kindle book okay obviously um, there will be a share in the profits from the sale between you and Amazon if you're using Amazon but this is a way that you can actually get your book out there it doesn't mean to say that after you've got your book out there you're not going to get picked up and get a fantastic deal or even a movie deal now the, on Amazon there are bestsellers there look on have a look check it out it is worth taking this very seriously if you are somebody who is an author and wants to get published on a very low budget. Okay, so that's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip for you, signing out and I'll see you on the next video. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Okay, what I'd like to talk to you today about is how to set yourself up as a awards ceremony host event organizer. Now, this is something quite big, however, you'd be surprised it's not very hard to set up. Now, I had the privilege of working alongside one of the most successful entrepreneurs in my lifetime and he basically, his interests were in media as well as in um, the creative industry. So this gentleman, he had a ceremony which is running, which runs still, even though um, he sold it, but it runs still over in Cannes, which is in France. And basically, the idea behind the award ceremony is that you're going to pander to the egos of people that everybody likes to be recognized. Let's just get it straight, okay? So it could be that, um, oh, there's just, it's just so vast, but uh, this particular one, it's um, the International Advertising Festival. And basically, what he would do, he would award people for their excellence in this field. So they've come up with the latest adverts, and we're talking on a global basis, by the way. So we're talking about the whole world coming into Cannes to see whether they've won a, a, a Cannes Lion. That's the award that you get. But let me tell you something. For everybody that puts forward an application, they have to pay. Okay? So imagine a company has eight people that would like to put forward for an award. That's eight. <laughs> That's eight administration or eight entrance fees or whatever you want to call it. So there's that side, okay? People attending that are not going for awards, they also have to pay. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but I need a big venue for that, it's gonna cost a lot of money. Well, you, yes, you can secure it, you don't need to pay the whole amount, but you can secure, not the same location, obviously, wherever you decide to have it, but you can secure that location for next to nothing. Start marketing that from early, maybe from a year in advance. Can you see how this can work out for you? Okay, obviously you need a website, you need to start building up your contacts, selling them the idea, but trust me, people, uh, if you can pander to egos, as in the Oscars or something like this, where people come away with an award, and that award means that you know they're recognized within their industry, you're onto a winner. All right, so it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup sit signing out. Thank <laughs> you.
Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip for you. Okay, today I'm going to talk about how you can become an event promoter. It's inexpensive for you to do. There's a lot of people out there that put events on and they need help in getting the seats or the venue filled. Now, you can take on that responsibility and charge a very interesting amount of money to help promote the event. You could actually get to that stage where they don't even try and promote their event anymore. They just give you the job and you know you just get paid, okay? So you're dealing with a number of clients. You're obviously gonna have a great list which will continue to grow and grow and grow. And you can promote events using the internet, using social media, and some very inexpensive um, tools or, or methods, for example, leaflets, you can get people to hand out leaflets very inexpensively if that's what you want to do. There's interesting videos out there about how you would go ahead to promote events, so I recommend you watch those, but you can actually make good money out of it. I personally know somebody who is an event promoter and she does it on a full-time basis and she's living very happily. Okay, so it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup sit signing. Ah. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip. So, if um, you're like me or like most people out there, you like to look good. You may be somebody that has a knack of um, knowing what workout you can do, which is not time consuming, but you get quick results. Why not set yourself up as a personal trainer? Now, if you're doing this uh, on a self-employed basis, Realistically, you need a bit of insurance, but then you can go out and train whoever you like. If you look good, you're going to find people are going to want to have you as their personal trainer to get them in shape. Now, on the flip side of it, I know that as a personal trainer, there's only so many people in a day you can train. How about if you were somebody that knew how you could get a six pack or even an eight pack in eight weeks, there's a big market out there for you. Trust me, there's a big market. What you could do, you could hire a very small venue, a room, invite some of your um, personal training friends maybe to be in a small video with you where you actually run an instructional video. It could be split into eight parts if it's an eight week training program and each video section covers one week. So it could be uh, day one, you shoot day one, could be half an hour or an hour long because we don't like to work out too long, remember that, okay? Uh, half an hour or an hour long and that's day one. Then your viewers will be watching that over the week's period. So you just keep shooting eight, uh, eight uh, sections of your video to cover an eight week period. You set up a website, you can sell your video directly from the website, you can get affiliate people to sell the video for you and before you know it, you're gonna be a celebrity fitness guy or woman <laughs> Okay, and you're going to make hand over fist on your video sales and you can keep your full-time commitments because once the website's up and rolling and people are buying direct from your website and you've got affiliate salespeople actually selling on your behalf, you're going to make good money. Okay, so it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip signing out. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Now, you may be somebody that's interested in food, okay? I love food. I love to have food made for me. I love to go to restaurants. But you, on the other hand, you may be somebody that loves to prepare food, 
okay? And you get humongous compliments from people that you cook for and they keep telling you, you should have a restaurant. I'm not gonna suggest to you that you go and get a restaurant because you know my whole thing is about starting up your business for next to no money and turning huge profits. So my recommendation to you is not to start a restaurant. What I would say is that, say for example, you have the next best banger. Okay, I'm in the UK, so a banger is a sausage, all right? Okay, all right. <laughs> so say for example you've got the next big banger it's juicy it's flavoursome it's going to um, uh, it's going to take over the market what you could do you could make sure that you've got your recipe down for your banger test them out on a number of people see what they feel about your banger and then I would recommend you go ahead and, and source a supermarket that's prepared to buy your banner. Now, it doesn't mean to say that you necessarily need to get into the production of it, but what I would say is that your presentation to the supermarkets is key in this. Okay, so go out, source some packaging for your banner, source the labeling for your banner, banger. <laughs> Source the labeling for your banger. Source a number of supermarkets that you're going to approach to actually sell the bangers on. Now, once you've got that meeting hooked up, turn up with your George Foreman, hook it up in their office, maybe the boardroom or something like that. Get the George Foreman going, put your bangers on the, the George Foreman. Mmm, the aroma's gonna drive them mad. You know, you're gonna prepare your banger, let them sample your banger. Before you know it, you could have a very interesting deal. So, for example, say you've gone to Marks and Spencers. Now, we all know that Marks and Spencers is throughout the UK and in a number of countries across the world. Can you see how this could be something that could go global for you very quickly because you have the talent the uh, ingredients and the passion to share with the world your food okay so it's samantha sutherland with another business startup tip signing out and i'll see you on the next video Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip for you. Okay, so you could be somebody that's interested in football. Maybe you can't play, but you love to watch, and maybe you're in touch with some fantastic talent. You go and kick ball with them, but you know that these guys are the business. Well, what can you do? You can become a football agent. Now, what you do, you get in touch with talent, probably people that you already know, people that you believe are really good and can make it to the Premier League. I mean, I'm based over in the UK and football is like the sport over here. And we're always buying in talent from overseas. So this is not something where you think, oh, I need to be over in the UK, I need to be in London. You could be anywhere in the world, as long as you've got access to that talent, you can go and sell that talent on to a major, um, a major football team and they will pay you as an agent hefty money. Make sure though that the footballers that you're dealing with, they've got, they're under contract with you, okay? First of all, protect your investment, all right? Now, in relation to getting in touch with the teams, well, they're not exactly hiding, are they? You can Google them. They're all over the place, contact details, and they are always interested in where the next hot talent is gonna be because it's all about winning the game, all right? So you can become a football agent, lots of money to be made for you right there. There's people that I know that do this on a full-time basis and they're very happy guys. Okay, it's Samantha Sutherland signing out with another business tip. See you on the next video. Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Okay, so what I'd like to talk to you today about is how to actually trade one currency against the other 
and set yourself up in business as a foreign exchange trader. Now, what you can do, you can log on and find out which, um, which portals are offering unlimited demo accounts because this is very important. I want you to get comfortable with a demo account so that you know how you're going to set your trades up, how the platform works because they're not all the same. So once you've found yourself a demo account, um, set yourself up. Like I say, you could trade on demo for a year. There are many places online that you can find free training. YouTube, check it out. Or you can private message me and I'll let you know which one I recommend to you. So once you know how to trade one currency against another and can I just mention two things here one always put a stop loss on your trades I know people that put trades in with no stops and go shopping madness so always make sure that you put a stop on your trade number two never trade the news now when news comes out uh, in different countries the currency goes crazy up and down so you don't want to be trading the news it's very volatile and I would not recommend it okay so you've traded on demo maybe for about six months a year and you're in profits low drawdown all of these technical terms you'll, you'll understand when you actually log on and start your demo account and start learning patterns to follow. Maybe you're a bit of a mathematician uh, and you can, you can kind of predict where the currency is going to go anyway. Observing the news, great on you. If you do that and you've got a great record, message me. I'm looking always for good traders. <laughs> okay. So once you've traded on demo and you're in profit, the next step will be to trade live. You may want to invest maybe one or two thousand pounds into your account and go live. Now, the reason I recommend you do this is that the emotions attached to trade, trading live versus trading on demo are totally different, okay? So once you've traded your account live for about a year and your record is good, start getting some clients. Now, there are people all over the world that are looking on um, how they can invest their money to make more money. Now, let's be frank about this. You can make a lot more money trading than you can in property. <laughs> so, what would happen is you would find your clients, they're not hard to find, you would find your clients and they would open accounts in the same um, uh, on the same portal that you have and they would attach their account to your account okay so you don't actually take money from them and you know get involved in any craziness they just attach their account to your account it's by a system called PAM P -A -M -M, and for every trade that you put on it is duplicated in their account by percentage so even though your account may, may be quite small maybe just one or two thousand pound account their account could be five hundred thousand pounds now where do you get paid from the profits so you charge them a percentage on the profits that you've made for them and I'm pretty certain you can see this is a very easy to start business from home low overheads huge profits if you're any good at trading okay so um, yeah what's left for me to say if you would like to know about how to educate yourself on trading send me a direct message I'm in direct contact with the king of trading Okay, so I can put you in touch with him and it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip and I'm signing out. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Have you noticed how your local supermarket and some of the, the uh, world renowned hotels are popping up everywhere? Haven't you noticed? <laughs> well, these guys are actively looking for sites 
Now it could be that locally to you, there are a number of sites that they'd be interested in. What I suggest you do is source those sites, log on to their websites and see whether they're actually going to pay for this information. You'd be surprised, a lot of them pay good money for the information so that they will be able to secure the site which will allow them to get into that location. So you're going to be a property sourcer for the commercial market, for hotels, for supermarkets, those kind of things, and you can make good money, especially if you're out and about all the time, you travel around a lot and you spot these opportunities. Okay, it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip, signing out. you like to play around with bits and pieces, electronics, I don't know, you could have the latest nail file or something. So you're a bit of an inventor, you like to potter around, it is actually your passion, well how about turning that passion into profits? Now there are a number of um, shops, superstores, we're talking the big um, players here, who you could approach once you've actually patented or at least applied for the patent of whatever it is you're doing that will buy into your idea. And there's many ways that you can make this happen. You don't need to produce a, a vast amount of whatever it is if you're, um, if you're in with the likes of whoa, Harrods, I don't know, just think of one off the top of your head. Um, they could actually go into a joint venture deal with you so that they have maybe the exclusive right on your product and they will fund it, okay? Get it out to the market, you make a bag of money. Okay, so that's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip for the inventors. <laughs> Signing out. <laughs> Hello.
Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Now, you could be somebody that has been looking at property. Maybe you're in the market to buy at the moment and you keep coming across these properties where you can't buy it on a mortgage. It needs to have a cash buyer, but yet there's so much meat on the bone. Guess what? You don't have to let that deal go. There are many people out there that have cash to buy that would love these deals. So whenever you come across these deals, what you can do, you can package them up, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go into the, the, the whole detail of the packaging and how you go on and sell it in this video because it's gonna be too long. I want these videos to be anywhere between one and three minutes, okay? <laughs> but what you could do, you could package that up and sell it on to a cash buyer. These guys, they have uh, cash from hundreds of thousands to millions, okay? And they pay you a finder's fee for it, okay? So you could be making anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand per deal, easily, all right? It's part of what I do in my business. So if you're interested in knowing how you go about sourcing these properties, how you go about packaging these properties, make sure you send your inquiry on my website, okay? SamanthaSutherland.co.uk. So there's another business startup tip for you from me and I'm signing out and I'll see you on the next video. Samantha Sutherland. As you can see, we're in London and it snowed. <laughs> okay, so today I'm here to talk to you about meetup.com. Now, their motto is do something, learn something, share something, and change something. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is really look at what your passions are and your hobbies, because people are quite happy to meet you as an event organizer to actually share information or enjoy experiences. So, um, it's quite easy to start up, log on meetup.com, you start up your own meetup group and people actually pay you to attend your meetups. So you could be somebody that um, has something which warrants meeting up once a month. You could be somebody that has something that warrants meeting up every week. For example, you could be an aspiring comedian. Um, there are other aspiring comedians out there, so maybe between your group, you can meet up every week and practice your jokes on each other. Okay, so think about hobbies, think about your skills. Maybe it could be to improve, improve people's languages, whatever you want. The world's your oyster. Okay, so I'm gonna go and have some fun in the snow and I'll catch you on the next video. Samantha Sutherland here and I'm here with another business startup tip. Okay, what I'd like to talk to you about is having a membership site, so a membership website. It can be about whatever you want as long as people are happy to pay you on a monthly basis for information, interaction, whatever it could be. Whatever, I don't know. So um, say for example, you have the hottest um, techniques on how people can how people can actually get their website to rank on page one okay you can offer a membership site now you could charge anything for it it could be 10 pounds a month 20 pounds a month 50 pounds a month it depends on what it is that you're offering to your members now there's no limit as to how many members you will have you can offer them information by video you can offer them interaction by webinar um, you could offer them live events maybe even I don't know whatever it is you know it's really down to you but what I'm saying to you is 
that you can set up a membership website which is very easy to do there are quite a number of um, applications out there that will allow you to set it up have passwords it will allow you to um, have people join at any time and they start from the first lesson so to speak um, it will allow you to freeze people's accounts if they've not paid um, it will monitor all the payments if people haven't paid they get locked off there's just so many um, of these facilities out there that are very inexpensive to buy and quite easy to set up to get you started now all you'd need to do is drive the traffic to your website do some promotion and don't forget my video how to get your video onto page one of uh, Google video search go back and check it out if you've not seen it but this is something that you can do working from your home that will allow you a very good income it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startups tip signing out Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Okay, so today I'd like to talk to you if you are somebody that uh, has come up with a product but you don't want to go down the line of opening a shop, you don't want to go down the line of huge advertising costs, you want to get your product out there. Well, have you noticed how many MLM organizations there are out there? Think about it. There's a lot of them. They sell underwear that keeps you looking trim. They sell drinks that will help you to lose weight. They sell tele telecommunication. Pretty much you can sell anything on MLM. Okay, that's multi-level marketing. So why don't you set yourself up as an MLM company? So you have your product, whatever it may be, and you will find that um, there are a number of people that are interested in your product and they buy it. The people that buy the product for you, you can recruit them into your MLM business. Now they um, are sold the idea that they have their own business within your business so to speak and they will actively go out there promoting it and selling the products that you're developing so that they can get higher up the ranks in the MLM organization. There's a lot of companies out there doing it. I think you'll find even Donald Trump has said that if people are looking to get into business that MLM is something to consider. But what I'm telling you is don't go down the MLM route if you're going to be somebody who's actually selling the stuff sell your own products you have your MLM company you have your monthly meetings these guys charge people to actually come to their meetings they charge people to learn how to market how to sell they charge people to come and listen to the latest product that's come out I mean you'll be making money hand over fist so what I say to you is set up your own MLM company and enjoy the process yes you'll need a website yes you will need to start making some contacts but you'll be surprised how many people out there are actually willing to subscribe to your MLM program buy your products continue to buy your products as well as go and sell your products for you it's beautiful okay it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip signing out Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip for you. Okay, so you may be somebody that's very good in sales. 
It's something that everybody should uh, learn what to do because we're all selling something at the end of the day. Even if it is that you're a man wanting to ask a woman out, you have to sell yourself to that woman for her to say yes. So everybody is involved in sales. But what I'm going to suggest to you right now is that you can set yourself up as a recruitment consultant. Now, it's a low startup business. What do you need? You need a website, obviously, okay? <laughs> <laughs> which I recommend you actually set up a WordPress website and you'd need a telephone, you'd need um, your email, etc. Now, there are a number of corporate firms out there that are continually recruiting and they're not hiding, they're very easy to find. So you make contact with these companies, find out of the latest positions that will be going, you start marketing these jobs and you get, have applicants register with you, they would send over the CV, etc. You'd monitor these, monitor these people, you may have to test some of them to make sure that the skills that they say that they have, they do have. Okay, so it's something that you could actually run from home. You don't need to have a high street shop to do this. Okay, so you would put forward the applicants, Bob's your uncle, one of them gets the job, you get paid. Okay, so on that's on um, uh, for people that are looking to get employment on a full-time basis. Obviously, there, there is the temporary side of things where companies that um, say for example the local hospital or something uh, are looking for temporary nurses to cover sick leave and stuff like this. This is something you could always get involved in as well. It's quicker pay and it gives you good, good, good money. Okay, so log on, check out what the other recruitment consultancies are doing. Just check them out on their website. Um, you could probably approach them as though you are working for uh, another company that is looking to recruit to find out what they're charging. Always do your research. Always make sure that you're competitively priced. Okay, so it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip signing out. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland. Okay, so here we are going to explore yet another business startup tip. I'm so excited to share this one with you. It was actually passed on to me by an entrepreneur that I worked with many, many, many years ago, and it's stuck. It's beautiful. Okay, so Back in the day when he told me, the internet really wasn't around, so I'm going to update it a little bit for you, but it's still the same strategy and it's so beautiful. Now, you may be somebody that has an eye for beautiful products, maybe um, items that aren't out to, um, not sort of flooded the market, so to speak. So you might be able to find these little bits here and there that people will pay over the odds for but yet you know where the source is. And your source, by the way, could be a company uh, or a shop who are quite happy to sell to you on a one-by-one -one basis. So you don't have to buy stock. You don't have to um, do the wholesale thing and then end up with a bunch of the products in your house that you're, you're hungrily looking to shift. Now, we all know about buy and sell. However, this strategy flips it right on its head and we're talking about sell and buy. Now, what do I mean by sell? Okay, so you'd have a website up, you've got your different products up on the website, beautiful pictures, detailed descriptions, and obviously what you're going to charge your clients for it or your customers for it. These people log on, they have a look around, they select the items that they'd like to buy, and they buy. So you've actually sold them the idea of the product, they've bought it, you now have the money to go to the, the supplier that you've sourced, you go and buy the product and ship it on. Obviously, there's a big markup, remember, you're not going to sell it at the same price, but this is the sell and buy strategy. You're selling the idea of something to then go and buy it to ship it out to your clients. It's beautiful. So if you want to set up a shop, this is the way that I would go about it. Low startup, low overheads, high profits, 
highly recommended. Okay, so I'm over at the offices of Dalton Barrett Solicitors and he does such phenomenal work. I just had to have him on this video to come and talk to you. Uh, you guys that are following me on Twitter, you probably you probably noticed that I've been retweeting some of his tweets because his work is phenomenal and he's here to help you and I'd like to introduce him to you right now. Here is the one, the only, Dalton Barrett. Thank you very much, Samantha. I don't know how on earth I can follow that uh, amazing introduction, but thanks anyway. Um, <clears throat> my name is Dalton Barrett. I'm a solicitor. Uh, we're based in Farringdon, and I'm here just to give you a few words about the work we do. Um, first thing about us, we've been established for quite a while, um, since 1991 in fact. Um, today I'm just going to mention one of my main areas of work which is uh, personal injury. Uh, first thing to know about personal injury is uh, you've got three years uh, to bring your claim and if you were a child at the relevant time you've got longer so don't worry about the fact that the claim was ages ago you'll still be able to bring it. Uh, a couple of things about how we operate as a firm. Uh, we're very flexible in terms of appointments. Um, uh, you can see us in the evenings, you can see us on Saturdays and if you can't make it to the office because of your injury we can come out and see you. Uh, we've also got disabled access uh, to our building. Uh, next point is how much is it going to cost you? Um, well, uh, good news, not a lot. Um, um, for the first time we see you we'll give you a consultation that will be free. The point of the consultation is we'll sit with you, we'll look at your case, we'll see what the merits are and if the case is a good one we'll be happy to take it on on a no win no fee basis. Um, what does that mean? It means we don't get paid unless we win so yes we've got to win if, we, if we're rubbish well we don't get paid so yeah we, we work hard and uh, nine times out of ten we do a good job and you know we're very often successful. So that's basically it. Um, I don't want to say a lot more except if you have got a personal injury claim come and see us uh, give us a ring, you've got our details uh, online there for you and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Okay, so get excited. If you have suffered a personal injury within the last three years or a bit longer if you were a child, check out Dalton Barrett. He is seriously hardcore. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the tip that I've given you today. There'll be another one coming out on the next video. It's Samantha Sutherland signing out. Samantha Sutherland, welcome back. Okay, so I'm here to deliver to you another way that you can make money from home with hardly any outlay. Now, this one is for people that love to talk, love to share, like myself. Um, so you might have information that could be valuable to people, you may have opinions that people like to discuss, you may just like to talk about what's going on locally. Um, you could be somebody who could start a radio show. Now what you can do, you can log on to the likes of blogtalkradio.com for example. It's a talk radio um, portal but it's a global talk radio portal. So you've got celebrities on there, you've got politicians on there, you've got actresses, everybody. I'm on there. My radio show is called Startup Great Britain and I know you like it so go and check it out, see the latest interviews. <laughs> but anyway, you can set up your own radio show whereby when you go to the break you sell advertising space time is money so if your content is really good and you've got a great uh, following you can sell advertising space if you want to be a bit more creative I know there's a lot of you out there that like to be visual I love to be visual I'm always in these films now you know I started off with two videos now there's going to be 32 videos up on my YouTube by the time I finish this but Forget all about that. You might be somebody that likes the visual side of things. So maybe you'd think about creating your own TV show, your own TV channel even. You can log on to the likes of Livestream.com. 
check it out you can get started for free I'm pretty certain if you're watching this video you have the majority of the equipment your computer your webcam that kind of thing and you can start your own TV show now there is a little word of warning here most of you may be tempted to play music on your shows whether it's the TV show or the radio show now when you listen to my radio show what you'll find is that the music that I play is music that I had got created for whatever it was that I was doing at the time so Young Entrepreneurs Bootcamp, I got LDOT to create a tune for me. Startup Great Britain Radio, I got somebody to create. Uh, just understand that every artist, every producer, every label, everybody that's included and put some work into music gets paid when that music has been played. So if you start up a radio show, be prepared for PRS to come knocking on your door and well, it's going to be a big bill, so just be careful about that. You might want to look into that and do some research. So my recommendation to you is start a talk radio show. If you're going to start something up on a, on a more creative level like your TV show, um, you may actually want people to watch you play video games. I know some of you have techniques that others would love to know about, and I know on YouTube there's a lot of video gameplay up there. Maybe your TV show could be all about that. And every time you go to the break, you sell advertising space. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip for you. Okay, you could be um, somebody that can teach people. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about teaching children. How about that? Okay, so you could have been a teacher and maybe you're not successful in securing another job. Maybe you're just tired of working for people and you want to work for yourself. Well, how about you set up a Saturday school? You can do this using the internet. Okay, you can have your um, your lessons be taught by webinar. It's very inexpensive to set up, and you'll be able to teach more than thirty students. You'll be able to teach quite a few students at the same time on webinar. Okay, so call it a Saturday school by webinar. All right. So what you're going to find, and I know that there's a lot of concerned parents out there that believe that the um, education system may not be delivering everything that their child needs, you deliver that on your Saturday school and you charge per person per month, okay? All right, so that's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip signing out. And I'll see you on the next video. is for young people. I know you're going to be watching my videos thinking, I've never had a job, what experience do I have? I've not got anything that I can turn into an income generating business, something that I can do from home. Well, I'm here to let you know that you do have something. I know you guys are up on the social media, you're on Facebook, you're tweeting, you're doing all sorts of things up on MSN, you probably know more about Google Plus than I do. So what I'm going to suggest to you is, that the skills that you have on social media you can actually use for businesses that actually need some help with marketing because every single business is in the business of selling so they need to get new customers in they need to be able to promote their latest offers etc this is where you can come in it's something that you can do from home using the skills that you already have so Facebook yes tick Twitter yes tick MSN Google Plus. So approach these companies, position yourself in a, a space whereby you're a professional and trust me, they will take you seriously. Imagine if you had 10 or 15 clients that were paying you 500 pounds a month. 
to market their companies. Can you see how quickly this can grow for you? Okay, so it's Samantha Sutherland signing out. I'll catch you on the next video. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Okay, so this one is for people that are aspiring artists. There's a lot of you out there, I know that 100%. I was contacted by someone, I've given him a bit of consultation and this is what inspired this video. So, you know who you are. Now, um, what I'd like to talk about is the fact that, yes, you probably can sing, you probably can rap, and you're a songwriter, but you're finding it hard to get a deal out there right now. Well, it doesn't mean to say, because your deal hasn't yet come, that you can't actually get into music. Now, what I suggest to you is that you go ahead and look for labels that have fantastic artists, we're talking the majors here, and sell them your songs, sell them the lyrics. You're a songwriter and you're gonna get paid. You're not gonna just get a one-off payment every time the music is paid, you get paid, okay? And that goes on for years. It could be 10 years down the road, you're still getting paid for your lyrics. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit strange for you right now, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, back in the day, I myself, I actually thought um, it would be a good idea to get into sound production. I then heard another number of artists come through and the raw the raw vocals versus what we did <laughs> on the board and how they sounded afterwards was totally different. So I'm gonna do a little a cappella for you. <laughs> Whoa. Told about Total before. madness. <laughs> Remember, even though you're working for yourself, you've got to have some fun. And I'm having some fun shooting these videos for you right now. And it's coming to an end. So I'm going to give you a little song. Ready? <laughs> My friend here has got it. This is what he's doing. Cheek. <laughs> okay. For so long, for this night I pray that a star will guide you my way to share with me this special day where the ribbons in the sky the ribbons in the sky the ribbons in the sky for our love He had no choice. I mean, my voice is so loud, you had to just Absolutely. listen. Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip for you. Okay, you know nowadays being a geek is actually highly desirable, trust me. And I know there's a number of you out there that were really into computers. You know how to create characters that walk and hop across the screen. Maybe you know how to develop a game all on your own. Well, guess what? Nintendo and all of these other game providers they're very interested in games they make a bag of money out of games so if you've got the know-how and the skill to create a game go ahead create the concept of the game then approach the game um, providers and see if you can come up with some sort of a joint venture project where you sell them the idea of the game and they pay you a set amount of money and then some uh, percentage on the earnings thereafter something like that okay so it's samantha sutherland with another business tip signing out
Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here with another business startup tip. Now, those of you that have read my biography, heard me talk, know that for many years I was a PA to director level. And this could be you. You could be a PA who has recently been made redundant. It doesn't mean to say that because you haven't been successful in securing another job that you're worthless. What you can do, you can set yourself up as a virtual assistant. Now, you know that a lot of the documentation that you were typing up was on audio anyway, which we can have easily delivered by email. Now, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that do not have offices, but they need the assistant. They need somebody to type up documents for them, to take calls for them, to organize their day-to-day -day activities and maybe some of their personal activities. You could do this from home. Doesn't mean to say you can work for one person. You can work for a number of people. You're talented after all. And before you know it, you'll be taking home more money than you were earning as an employee working for one company. Okay, it's Samantha Sutherland with another business startup tip signing out. Hello, it's Samantha Sutherland here and I would like to talk to you very quickly about my business startup story. Now, there's some of you that would heard me speak and some of you may have actually logged onto the website and read my bio, but I'd like to actually give you in this video my business startup story. Now, I was working happily for an estate agency in London for a month and a day. I wasn't really getting on with the branch manager, but those of you that come to hear me talk live, I'll go into more detail about that, but trust me, I was in the right. <laughs> so anyway, um, the branch manager went ahead and reported negatively to the area manager, and lo and behold, on my birthday, I got the sack on the spot. Walked to the front of the office and left. There you go. So I walked from that, that estate agency firm around the corner to my hairdressers. He was doing a chemical process on one of his clients and couldn't spare any time to talk to me, which was probably a good thing to be quite honest for how my story progressed. And I stood overlooking his courtyard and I looked down on the ground and I thought to myself, I know, I'll set up a letting agency. And that was it. That was it. The following day I went ahead and I started my business. It took me around about £30 to start it. Six days later I turned a profit. Now, why am I telling you this story? I know there's another video out there where I, where I shot it at the same spot. But why am I telling you this right now? Well, I could have crumbled. I could have cried. I could have gone into a state of depression. You know, that is exactly what he wanted. <laughs> But it didn't work out that way for him because he gave me the best birthday present of my life. It was about 12 years in the coming that I was speak I was thinking to myself, I'd like to start a business. I don't know what it's going to be. And, you know, I didn't really make any effort to start a business. I didn't even really make any effort to try and figure out what the business would be. I just thought to myself, it'll land on my lap one day. You know, lax. That's how I was. But when I got the boot, I'm telling you everything for me changed that day. Now mindset is very important. If you're the kind of person that um, takes things too personally, you need to get over that. If you're going to start working for yourself, you have to develop a thick skin, okay? Because time is money. You're out there really just, well, you can call it hustling, working, whatever, whatever you want to call it. You're working for yourself. You're making money. You're your own boss. There is nobody else that you can blame for this, that, and all the rest of it. You have to take ownership for your own stuff. So what did I do that day? I took ownership, all right? I wasn't gonna sit down and say, oh, well, I've got no income coming in because of this thing that happened to me. Woe is me, feel sorry for me. Oh, things are so terrible. No, I knew that I had to continue earning money. What was the best way for me to do it? Not work for anybody again was the answer. I was not going to be an employee. I was not going to allow anybody to have that opportunity over me again and I started my business okay so <laughs> 
It's Samantha Sutherland. I'm going to sign out right now and I will be seeing you on the next video.